Hello, my name is Antonis Rokas and I would like to welcome you in the Department of Biological Sciences at Vanderbilt University. In our lab, we are employing experimental and computational evolutionary methods to understand the DNA record and the clues it provides for organisms' biological past and their history of change and adaptation. One question that we are particularly interested in is the evolution of metabolism in the kingdom fungi the lineage of yeasts, molds, and mushrooms, and which together with bacteria are the decomposers of natural ecosystems. Hello, my name is Jason Slott, and I'm the first author of this paper. In fungi, genes involved in metabolism often reside side by side in the genome. For example, in this cartoon diagram, three genes that live side by side in the genome encode the enzymes for catalyzing three successive chemical reactions that together convert the first molecule to the last molecule. One major part of fungal metabolism is devoted to the production of small molecules, such as pigments and toxins. These small molecules are known as secondary metabolites. Perhaps the most famous secondary metabolite is penicillin. Penicillin is produced by a cluster of three genes. Although some secondary metabolites, like penicillin, are beneficial to humans, others can be detrimental. One such toxic metabolite and potent carcinogen is stereogmatocystin. Stereogmatocystin is produced by one of the largest known fungal gene clusters, a 23 gene cluster that spans approximately 60,000 base pairs. Stereogmatocystin and its chemical relative aflatoxin can contaminate a variety of food products, such as grains, and render them dangerous for human and animal consumption. As part of a larger study on the evolution of metabolic clusters, I noticed that the stereogmatocystin cluster of Aspergillus, a genus in the class Eurotiomycetes, showed an unexpectedly high degree of similarity in gene content, order, and orientation to a 23 gene cluster in Podospora, a genus that belongs to Sideriomycetes, an entirely different class of ascomycete fungi. Surprisingly, no other Sordariomycete genome possessed this gene cluster. Here we see the stereogmatocystin cluster region is one of very few where Aspergillus nigilans is more similar in gene order to Podospora and Serina than to the corresponding region in its close relative Aspergillus flavus. This observation raised the possibility that the Podospora cluster originated through horizontal gene transfer from Aspergillus. These two species both lead a saprophytic lifestyle and can coexist in the same environment. To formally test the hypothesis that the Podospora cluster originated via horizontal transfer, I performed maximum likelihood and Bayesian phylogenetic analyses on all 23 genes of the stereogmatocystin cluster. I inspected each constructed gene tree for evidence of horizontal gene transfer between Aspergillus and Podospora, and evaluated the statistical support. Most of the genes supported horizontal transfer, and none rejected it. But the presence of the cluster in the genome does not mean that the fungus can produce stereogmatocystin. To address this question, we examined the Podospora transcript collection and found that more than half of the cluster genes are expressed at several different developmental stages. At roughly the same time, and independently of our work, a natural product screening study showed that Podospora not only is capable of producing stereogmatocystin, but also that the produced metabolite has potent larvicidal activity against the malaria mosquito vector Anopheles gambiae. And given the abundance of metabolic gene clusters in fungi, our finding that one of the largest known metabolic clusters moved intact between species suggests that wholesale metabolic pathway transfers might have significantly contributed to the remarkable metabolic diversity of fungi, including the ability to produce highly toxic compounds.